Hi everyone, and welcome back to The Shack, and an interesting episode for me as I've been almost dreading it. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that I have recently been showing a bit of love to an old C64 with a full recap, refurb, and the installation of a Lumafix 64 to sort out the display. There are links floating around above if you want to nip off and watch those first. I also got a tape car SD and had a play with that and it's a great little unit for loading single load PRG binary files but can't handle the D64 disc images so that's a lot of disc only games and utilities out of the window for my old C64. But it does load those single load games blindingly fast. And then there's the Kung Fu Flash which has PRG support as well, but also includes support for CRT cartridge files, and importantly, it has D64, D71, and D81 disk image support. Although it's not actually a disk drive emulator, so your mileage may vary depending on what image you try to load. It's also not a fast loader, so there's a lot of waiting to be done, which isn't as palatable to me as it was 30 years ago. If money was no object, I'd surely go for the Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge, which does have a cycle accurate disk emulation of two drives, G64 support, memory expansion, a built-in speaker for floppy sounds, ethernet and a whole host of other amazing things. But it's 140 euros and I can think of other things to spend that kind of money on. And then there's the SD2 IEC, which is pretty much the go-to unit for most C64 owners. And it again does disk images, PRG files, etc., but it also allows for multi-disk programs and has a lot of fast loader support. However, it's not truly a cycle accurate emulator and this can cause issues with some programs. So that brings me to this little device, the Pi 1541 with Epic's fast load cartridge. And on paper, it's a lovely bit of kit, and that's the reason I've been dreading this, as it just seems too good to be true. The unit will set you back around £25 on eBay for the populated PCB. You'll need a Pi Zero for about a fiver, an SD card formatted to FAT32, and you'll probably want to print yourself a case. Links to all of this can be found in the description. Putting it all together is relatively straightforward. There are six screws in total, just be sure to follow the guidelines for what size screws to use, depending on which case you print. Pop the Pi Zero in first and secure the bottom two rear screws through the Pi and into the standoffs. Then place the Pi carefully on top, being sure to align the pins correctly and gently push down. Then pop the top of the case on and secure with the remaining screws. And to be honest, it looks really nice. Obviously, a lot of that depends on how good your printer and printing skills are, but I think this one turned out pretty well. Let's have a look at what you supposedly get for your money. Well, for a start, you're getting a Pi 1541, which is a Raspberry Pi powered, real-time, cycle accurate 1541 disk drive emulator created by Steve White. It supports D64, D81, G64, NIB, an NBZ Commodore disk images, which covers the majority of 8-bit Commodore disk formats. The Pi 1541, unlike the SD2 IEC, emulates all of the hardware inside the original 1541 drive. The 6502 processor, both 6522 VIA chips, and all of the ROM, RAM, I.O. devices and drive mechanics. This means it runs everything a real 1541 can, including copy protected original images. There are a vast variety of options you can configure via the options.txt file on the SD card, but frankly I'm hoping not to have to tinker with that, I'm hoping it works out of the box. Now the other really cool bit about this is that as well as the Pi 1541 emulator, this cartridge has a built-in Epix fast loader, so you get true emulation of the 1541 and the enhanced speed of the Epix cartridge in the same slot. I've loaded a few disk images onto an SD card, so let's pop this cartridge into the slot. We'll plug the cable into the cassette port and see how we get on. 
I've chosen some games with different loaders and levels of complexity so we can see how well the Pi 1541 copes with each and we'll also see how this operates as a native disk drive for our own programs. It's a nice fit and the shape of the cartridge means it sits nicely in the back and rests on the desk without putting pressure on the edge connector. The buttons are on the back of the machine and if you printed the label off it sits on the bottom so you just have to remember what buttons do what. It's pretty straightforward once you've done it a few times. We'll start with Tapper, as I don't believe this image has any fast loader at all, so this may take a while to load. As the Pi 1541 is emulating the 1541 drive essentially at a hardware level, all of the commands you'd use to work with disks on a real drive will of course work with this too. It's worth noting that there are other versions of the Pi 1541 that work with the bigger variants in the Raspberry Pi family, and these options allow the use of external screens and keyboards to manipulate disk images on the fly without the need for fiddly buttons. Now that's loaded, we'll just keep pressing the spacebar to get through the intro and crack screens, and there we are, Tapper, which, as you've probably guessed, I'm not very good at. You can see a theme building here, can't you? I'll just serve a few of these folks and then we'll try something with a known fast loader, Rick Dangerous. Uh, yeah, I think that's enough of this. Quit while the going's good, eh? Rick Dangerous next. In fact, Rick Dangerous too. And this title definitely has a fast loader of some description. And I'm hoping the emulation of the drive will come good. While it's loaded this far, I'll just keep pressing the spacebar and hope for the best. Infinite everything probably still won't help me, but I'll accept them anyway. And yep, the game loads just fine. In fact, I'm far too embarrassed to even show you this, so let's move on to our last test game before we dive into the C64 command line. This is the 2015 remake of Ghosts and Goblins a nearly arcade perfect achievement on the humble C64. As a more recent title, it has a custom loader and has several versions including one, this one, the IFFL REU version that is intended for use on actual drives. Even with a fast loader, it can take time to load games in and that's because the original 1541 was incredibly slow with a sustained data transfer rate of 300 bytes per second. In perspective, that means that a standard C64 disk drive is actually four and a half times slower than a standard Spectrum cassette tape. So why were C64 disk drives so popular? Well, consider that the C64 dataset tape unit had a transfer rate of just 50 bytes a second. And well, you get the picture. So fast loaders were a big thing and many different companies try to make theirs the fastest and most feature rich. But this Pi 1541 should handle them all. Ok, let's drop out to the command prompt. I've created a blank D64 image and loaded it in on the Pi 1541 as the active disk. Let's create that ubiquitous kid in a computer store program. Don't moan, you've all done it and so have I. And then we'll run that because, you know, reasons. Ah, the memories. Anyway, then we'll use the standard C64 basic disk commands. We'll save it down to that active blank disk image. Once it's saved, we'll use the verify command to make sure that it's saved correctly and matches the program that's in memory. Now we'll list the program to show it's in memory, issue the new command to clear the memory and finally load it back in to show that all disk access is working. All being well, we should be able to list the program and rerun it. I call that a successful test. So, in conclusion, 
Do I still want an Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge? Yes, I do, as it has a ton of great features. Do I need an Ultimate 2 Plus cartridge? Not really. This Pi 1541 with Epic's fast loader will probably cover 99% of everything I ever want to load on my C64. And with the spare money, well, I can buy something else to enjoy and to share with you all. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this episode, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified of new content. Do you have one of these? What do you think of it? Please leave your comments below and until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me.